Welcome. So we have momentum and we want to think about when momentum is conserved. So one relationship that we have is that we've learned that the external force is equal to the change of momentum in the system with respect to T, the derivative of this. What this means is that if our force external happens to be zero, then it's zero on this side, so we have the change of momentum in the system with respect to time is zero. If the derivative is zero, the only functions that's whose derivative is zero are constants. So then the momentum of our system is a constant in time. It's much easier for us usually to say then if it's constant in time then whatever initial state of our momentum is, right, the sum of all of our momentums, should then, if it's constant, be equal to a final state. Now, very often, right, practically, we'll then say the momentum of one initial plus the momentum of two initial plus all the different figures would then be equal to the momentum of one final plus the momentum of two final, and so on and so forth. So we can say this, again note, only if our external force is zero. So if we have no external forces, then we can use this conservation of momentum. But if we don't, then we can't. So how do we determine when we can use, right? So when to know that our external forces are zero, or how to know that. And the answer to that is using interaction diagrams. So if we have an interaction diagram, with some number of objects and then some number of forces or interactions on those objects, then we can define systems in which momentum is conserved and we can define systems in which momentum is not conserved. So if I was to do just this one, is momentum conserved in this case? So pause along and see if you can answer. All right, welcome back. So is momentum conserved in this case? Unfortunately, it's not because we have this external force A. What can we do to get a uh, system in which this is all conserved? Well, we could then make a larger system in which all of the objects are inside the system. In fact, if you hear in pop science or anything like that, of talking about the momentum of everything is conserved or energy of everything is conserved, that's considering a large enough system, a large enough dotted box that it contains the entire universe. If we put a dotted box around the entire universe, everything is in our system, then we can't have external forces. We can't have external works. So this momentum of the universe and energy of the universe should be conserved, right, until we find some external force outside of it. But that's what we usually say. The other thing to know with this is that we track the momentum of each particle in the system. So for this smaller system, we would only track two particles. But for this larger system, we have to track three particles. So write P1i plus P2i plus P3i, P1f, P2f, P3f. So in this case, it might be easier. And this is where we introduce the impulse approximation. So for impulse approximation, we are asking for very specific cases. So if our change in time is very small, and our external force is much, much smaller than the force of the collision, 
if this is the case for both, then the external impulse is going to be much, much less than the impulse from the collision. And then the change in mar momentum initial compared to the momentum final, they will be roughly equal to each other. So then we approximate that these two will actually be equal to each other. when this j external is very small. So this impulse, if this impulse is extremely small, then our momentum is roughly conserved, approximately conserved. And so we just say, eh, it's close enough. So that is how we talk about conservation of momentum, talk about system choices, and talk about if we can't choose a system that contains all the forces, how we can possibly, if necessary, approximate it away.